Hi, I'm Chris Thompson for Investor Intel. And today I'm here with Peter Clausey, who's the VP of Capital Markets at Silver Bullet Mines. How are you today, Peter? Good. Nice to see you again, Chris. Well, Silver Bullet, you know the story well. Uh, it's had a lot of news recently. You guys are going gung-ho at two different uh, projects where you're trying to get two mines into operations, raise some money, and put out some unbelievably high assay results. So let's uh, focus right now on uh, the, the one mine in Arizona and maybe give us a quick update on that one. Sure. The property itself is called Black Diamond. It's almost 5,000 acres. It has five past producers on it. We own them all. We're putting one of them into production now called the Buckeye. That should be in production in between four to eight weeks. We're waiting on the electricians to wire the master control unit to the rest of the ball mill. And as soon as the electricians do their job, the ball mill starts turning and we're pumping out silver. It's that imminent. And uh, you did some uh, release some uh, assay results earlier this week. And uh, they were unbelievable. And in fact, the first time I looked at them, I thought maybe the, the comma was in the wrong place. They're sort of what I would call beyond bonanza grade. Let's just yep. uh, go over those for a little bit. Uh, what do you make of them? Well, I'm just a lawyer. What do I know? But the smart <laughs> people, uh, they've identified this part of the mine as the treasure room. There was a collapse here in 1873. And with silver at 70 cents a, ton, a pound, nobody wanted an ounce, sorry. Nobody cared to go back and get it. We located it, we found the historical records and we tracked the treasure room. And we told people the numbers in there were spectacular. And they are. So this proves up the historical record. It validates the feed, field team, gives us the material we need for the mill. And the numbers are astonishing. Common wisdom is that Bonanza silver is at about 30 ounces per ton or one kilogram per ton. Common wisdom. All right, one kilogram per ton. Some of our samples came in at 20, four kilograms a ton, 23 kilograms a ton, 11 kilograms a ton. They're just incredible, incredible values coming out of the treasure room and elsewhere in the mine. And what is the timetable for production there? You said that you're waiting for some electricians and then what sort of run rate are you gonna have uh, for, for say that the first quarter as you ramp up? Well, we don't have a PEA. We don't have a resource estimate. So our good friend 43101 says, I can't tell you those things. Oh, okay. But we have internal numbers. We know what we're going to do. Um, we're making adjustments for the grade of the silver to make sure we have a constant feed into the mill. Uh, we recently did a financing that was massively oversubscribed, giving us the economic strength to attach a copper circuit onto the ball mill. We always knew copper content would be high at the Buckeye. So our original plan was to run it for the silver on a gravity mill expecting the copper to steal some of the silver, put it in the tailings pond and come back when there's a slow time and mine the tailings. Our economic strength allows us to attach that copper circuit now. And we just so happen to have a couple of cells in the back of our lay down yard because our CEO, John Carter with foresight bought the remnants of a broken mine down the road and laid all the parts in our yard. So we don't have to go buy a cell. We already have one. That sounds great. And so the, you mentioned your recent financing. I think you were coming to the market looking to raise about a million dollars. What was the final total? As a board, we budgeted, what do we need for the next year, bare minimum? What would we like to have? And what would be our wonder budget? And we exceeded our wonder budget. We came in at $2.7 million on a half million dollar financing. So that that sounds speaks, that's the, the strength of the technical team. Uh, we've communicated very well with the market. People have faith in John Carter as CEO. When it comes to processing, there's probably nobody more suited for this job than John. He has built over 200 mills around the world in processing facilities. This is his world. Well, that's great. I mean, it's great to be fully funded uh, for the project. Is there any exploration in the area you, you might do with some of that money? Uh, maybe. We're putting uh, the Washington mine in Idaho into production. And getting the Idaho mine into product, the Washington mine in Idaho into production is more important than exploring at the McMorris. Okay, so, the, so order let, let, the order of operations is Buckeye mine production, Washington mine in Idaho production, explore the McMorris. And so what's going on in Idaho when you say getting it into production? Uh, what have you found of that uh, mine? And it's an old mine site as well, right? Former producer in the late 1800s, the 1900s, 1920s, 1930s. They direct shipped ore on muleback 
from here, I think it went through San Francisco for direct ore smelting, which tells you what kind of incredible grade there was. Geologically, uh, this is the boring part. Geologically, there's a gold vein and a silver vein laid down in two different eras. That means that the smart guys like you, Chris, can go underground and look at the ore and go, oh, that's the gold ore, that's the silver ore. Again, nobody wanted silver at 70 cents an ounce. So they blocked off the known silver, mapped it out with incredible detail, and chased the gold. There's 13,000 feet of workings underground there as they chased the gold. They did not come back for the silver. And according to the map, the big block of the mineralized silver area is just inside the attic with a right turn. So the plan to us is obvious. Make sure it's safe because safety standards have changed since the 1930s. <laughs> Timber it, put in bolts and netting and all the stuff you have to do to make it safe. No dewatering needed because we're high enough up the mountain. Send in a contract mining team, take out, call it 2000 tons of material. Historically, the grades ran around 59 ounces a ton. Pre-43-101, so all the caveats and warnings apply to that. Pull that ore out. There's a mill that's three hour drive away. Take the ore to that mill, toll mill it, collect a check. That's our summer program for the Washington mine in Idaho. It's not gonna take a lot of our resources. It's not gonna take a lot of our human resources because we're contract mining it out. And then next steps after that, are you looking to do more work there? Uh, we'll expand that, but we want to get through this program first and then reassess the workings underground, make sure they're safe, make sure they're accessible. But if the historical records are accurate, which to date they have been, there is a lot of silver there. We took a bulk sample from eight different locations within the mine and the vein face. Uh, that blended out to 44 ounces of silver per ton. And again, recall common wisdom is that Bonanza starts at 30. So the numbers out of that mine are astonishing too. And the cash flow from this mine, how long would it take uh, for it to, you to, to get that bulk sample to the actual processing? Would it be done this uh, quarter, the second quarter of this year? Maybe third. It'll be done this, you know, this summer. Okay. Right, whatever summer program means. Uh, there's some snow up there still. The team has been in there for a look. Um, so probably we'll be getting a check July, August, that time frame. Right. And so looking forward to news flow for the rest of the year, maybe just uh, you know, three quick bullet points on what investors can look forward to. The mill at uh, the Buckeye is complete. The mill is turning. We're producing silver. We have sold silver and collected a check for it. The Washington mine in Idaho is in production. We've collected a check from that. And we'll be exploring the McMorris, which is a massive piece of our property. And the source of the legend of the Lone Ranger Silver Bullets, which is why in part we named the company Silver Bullet Mines. You're, you're creating a new legend here with the Silver Bullet, which is SBMI on the TSX uh, Venture Exchange. Yep. Uh, you guys were recently listed this year at 30 cents, or you're up about 50% uh, so far. And I think uh, as you, you get more uh, revenue recognized with some, some sales, it could uh, help... Uh, uh, with the market, uh, giving you a little more credit for what you guys have been doing. Yeah, at that point, we become like a shoe company, right? A, a custom shoe. We make our own shoes. We sell our own shoes. We have our own brand. We make silver. We sell silver. And we collect checks for that. At that point, we are not exploration. We are not development. We are a producing mine with our own mill and our own lab and our own equipment and our own cash flow. <laughs> and that's important in these days. I think. Uh, a lot of investors are looking for that cash flow, uh, especially when you're producing. So yeah, uh, we're, we're expecting to get rewarded once we announce we're in production. Great. Well, thanks for your time. I was talking with uh, Peter Clausey, uh, who is the VP Capital Markets at Silver Bullet Mines. Uh, it's on the TSX Venture Exchange under SBMI. Thanks for your time today, Peter. You as well. Look to have you down at the property soon. <laughs>